this is the new course on the theory of equations that covers all the important and every kind of questions on the theory of equations right and also the important and expected questions for the competitive exams so let's move on to the introduction part that is the quadratic equations so the definition is the equation of the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 where a is non zero and a b c all these are belonging to the complex numbers the set of complex numbers so this is called the quadratic equation and the numbers a b c these are the coefficient of the equation let me mark this equation as one now moving on to the root of a quadratic equation a root of a quadratic equation one that is this one is a complex number alpha such that this alpha should satisfy this equation if alpha satisfies this equation then this alpha is a root of the equation right so that is a alpha square plus b alpha plus c should be equal to zero then is the discriminant of equation and it is denoted by d so it is the quantity that is b square minus 4ac where b is the coefficient of x and a is the coefficient of x square and c is the constant. Now the question arises how to find the roots of the equation. For that there is a formula which is given by for the roots of the equation that is x equal to negative b plus minus square root of the discriminant divided by 2 times a where this discriminant is b square minus 4ac right okay let's study about the nature of the roots now let a b c is belonging to the set of real numbers and a is non-zero then for equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero that is the quadratic equation in x if the variable is x we say the quadratic equation in x if the variable is y we say that this is the quadratic equation in y right so here we are having the quadratic equation in x now what can we say about the nature of the roots for that we need to find the discriminant of the equation if the discriminant d is strictly positive then we say that the nature of the roots are real and distinct and it is the both way case that is if and only if if you know that the roots are real and distinct then we say that discriminant is strictly positive and if the discriminant is positive we say that the nature of the roots are real and distinct that is the vice versa it is the if and only that is the both way case next is the roots are real and equal if and only if the discriminant is equal to zero then is the roots are complex roots with non-imaginary parts if and only if the discriminant is negative strictly negative there is one more point on the complex number p plus iota q where p and q belongs to the set of real numbers and q is non-zero right is a root of equation one if and only if p minus iota q is a root of equation one right so if p minus iota q is the root of the equation then we say that p plus iota q is also the root of the equation right and if p plus iota q is the root of the equation then we say that p minus iota q is also the root of the equation so this is also the both way true next is the relationship between the roots and the coefficient so this is your quadratic equation in x ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero now this equation is having the power 2 that means it is having two roots only right the equation will have two roots only to find the sum of those roots so to find the sum of the roots that is alpha plus beta that is equal to negative b divided by a just write the coefficient of x with negative sign and divide this by the coefficient of x square then is the product of the roots that is alpha into beta that can be found by c divided by a this constant divided by the coefficient of x square 
right? So this is the relation between roots and the coefficients. Please note that the quadratic equation whose roots alpha and beta is given. So for that, just find x minus alpha into x minus beta equal to 0. And when you solve this, you will get the quadratic equation in x with the roots alpha beta, right? That is x square minus sum of the roots x plus product of the roots. So just put the sum of the roots over here and the product of the roots over here and get your quadratic equation if the roots are given, right? Okay. Then is the quadratic expressions. Let's write fx to be equal to ax square plus bx plus c, right? Where a, b, c are belonging to the set of real numbers and a is non-zero. Now the condition is that a is non-zero. So I'm going to take a common from this, right? So it is a into x square plus b divided by a into x plus c divided by a. I need to make the perfect square from this. For that, I just need to add and subtract b square divided by 4a square. So from this, I get a perfect square, the formula that is x plus b divided by 2a whole square plus the remaining term that is 4ac minus b square divided by 4a square. If you remember that your discriminant is b square minus 4ac, right? You can also make the numerator as b square minus 4ac and then this sign will be changed. Now this fx can be positive or it can be negative. For a positive fx, we must have this right hand side to be positive. And for a negative fx, we must have this right hand side to be negative. And now we are going to discuss what is the nature of the discriminant for positive fx and negative fx, right? A is non-zero, that is for sure. That is why we have taken A common first. For fx to be positive, I need this right hand side to be positive. A is non-zero, right? So this A should be positive. The expression in the bracket should be positive. Then only the right hand side can be positive. The first term is already positive because of the square. And now about the second term. Denominator is positive because of the square, right? 4 is your positive number. And now about the numerator. So numerator, that is the discriminant, b square minus 4ac. Now this complete expression in the bracket will be positive if this discriminant is negative, right? So what we have concluded, that for a positive fx, a should be positive and the discriminant should be negative. For fx to be negative, a should be negative. This expression should be positive because I need the right hand side to be negative. I need the complete right hand side to be negative for negative fx, right? I need to have the complete expression in the bracket to be positive, right? First term is positive. The denominator of the second term is already positive, right? Now moving on to the numerator. If the discriminant is negative, then this complete expression in the bracket will be positive. So again, for the second condition, we found that discriminant should be negative. So what we have concluded for a negative fx, a is negative and the discriminant should also be negative. So in both the cases, we have found that discriminant is always negative and a is positive or negative in accordance with your fx, right? Okay, let me mark this equation to be as 1. So it follows from equation 1, fx is positive or negative for all x belonging to R if and only if A is positive or negative 
and the discriminant that is b square minus 4ac is strictly negative and secondly it also follows from one that for fx to be greater than equal to 0 we must have a positive and discriminant to be equal to 0 right and for fx to be less than equal to 0 we must have a negative and again discriminant to be 0 f of x is greater than equal to 0 or less than equal to 0 if and only if a is positive or a is negative and the discriminant b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 right in this case fx is strictly positive or strictly negative for each x belonging to the real numbers your x cannot be equal to negative b divided by 2a right so x cannot be equal to b divided by 2a otherwise this complete right hand side will be zero to make fx positive this x should not be equal to negative b divided by 2a so for positive fx or negative fx x should not be equal to b divided by 2a right so this is all about the introduction part for the theory of equations in the next lesson we are going to study all those important and expected questions based on this content all right thank you